since I did my uh, section hike in Georgia, I uh, had some people ask me some questions about my gear and stuff like that because I didn't really show a whole lot of different stuff and I didn't really talk about you know, how I set my camp up and all that kind of stuff. So I uh, just wanted to kind of show you some of the, uh, the gear that I used and, and how I did some stuff uh, on my trip. This is my backpack. It is a Gregory Paragon 58. Uh, there are lighter packs, there are heavier packs. This one's a good middle of the road. Uh, yeah, without spending just a whole ton of money. Uh, I think I gave around 200 bucks for this one. Uh, it's been a good one. Uh, it's gonna last me a long time. It's been on a lot of hikes. And I'm gonna continue to use it as long as it's uh, still kicking. All right, the first thing is that I'm not pulling this stuff out in any particular order because honestly, I just shoved this stuff in here just to bring it out here to the park. This is what I use for my shelter right here. This is a seal nylon tarp. I think it's about 10 by 11. Uh, I've got a ground sheet which is actually the floor out of an old tent that I used to have that's wore out now. And then just uh, some stakes and some cord to set it up with. So didn't actually use the tent. Just this right here. The whole thing only weighs about a pound. So pretty compact, pretty lightweight. I've had this thing for a long time. It's always done a good job, so I will continue to use it. Sleeping bag, I've got a uh, 40 degree REI bag. It got down to 22 degrees while I was out there. Uh, this one right here is uh, rated at 40, but I also wore a puppy coat and uh, down booties on my feet. And other than that, I stayed warm. Yeah, here's, here's my puppy booties right here that I wore. This helped me keep warm in the sleeping bag at night. And uh, those things, I got them for like 15 bucks at Amazon. And on top of my bag, I used this seal nylon bag cover. And this kind of created like a vapor barrier, which is another way that I kept really warm while I was in my sleeping bag. Uh, sleeping pad, it is a uh, climate. It's, uh, this one's insulated and it's rated at 4.4 R value and uh, this thing is you know, pretty lightweight, you know, doesn't take up much space, you just blow it up. This is something I always carry in the front of the pack right here because it's something I'll need to get to during the course of the day and that is my water filter, water purification kit here which is my Sawyer squeeze and then I've got some uh, Aquamira which is a chemical treatment that I can uh, treat the water to if I just get lazy. Other than that, I got some uh, extra caps in case I lose something. But this is a uh, three liter platypus water bag. So when I got to camp, or before I'd get to camp if there was no water, I would uh, fill this up and then filter this. So I didn't carry that full. This is a uh, life water bottle. You can get these pretty much anywhere or you can use smart water and if you want to the uh, Sawyer squeeze water filter will actually screw on the threads of this they do not screw on all threads but they do screw on these here's something else I carried this was just a little pad that I'd carry to sit on in case it was wet out there or you know some just sit around camp on uh, just a little extra pad and I could probably go with cutting that down even more. As far as clothes, these are the pants that I used right here. They've got the zip off legs. Uh, when it comes to clothing out on the trail, only use synthetic or something like that. Do not ever use cotton anything out on the trail because cotton, it does not dry well. It stays damp if it gets wet and uh, you're going to freeze in it where anything nylon or wool or you know some kind of synthetic is going to dry out quickly and so you're going to need that uh, the shoes that I wore I've got the uh, ultra lone peak 3.5s they're trail running shoes the trail runners uh, I use them for trail running I use them for backpacking they, uh, they are amazing. Uh, as far as socks go, 
these are uh, darn tough socks and then my other pair of socks that I used are these smart wool this is the only socks that I carried the whole trip I wore these one day and wore these the next day while they were drying out or, or whatever so every day I would just alternate and the same thing with underwear these are ex officios synthetic not cotton nothing cotton goes out in the woods but I had two pair of underwear I rotated them out wear one one day one the next one one day one the next at night or any time if it was going to be cold I had these uh, 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 I guess like long underwear and uh, these these tights here and they kind of have a little insulating value so I wore them in my sleeping bag and uh, they compress down to practically nothing these are great this is all I needed along with these when it was cold this shirt here is one that I got probably at Kohl's a long time ago uh, you see now that was the only short sleeve shirt I carried on the whole trip and this thing did amazing but now this one right here this is a merino wool long sleeve shirt I got this thing these things are not cheap temperature range on it. It dries quickly and it doesn't stink. My rain jacket is a marmot precip. I've had one of these one time before and I wore it out to till it was pretty much falling apart and so when it was time to give it up I just went ahead and got another one just like the old one. I have my, uh, my hat that I wore. I did have a ball cap but I didn't bring it on this but I got this and I also got this buff that I would wear sometimes. Uh, you might have seen it wears around my neck. Just sort of keeps your neck warm. If it was uh, really cold, I might, you know, cover up my face a little bit. If the wind was really blowing hard, it was cold. Got these uh, these gloves here. I got them at Academy. They're water resistant. Uh, they did good. I really needed nothing more than these. You know, so even when it was kind of damp out, uh, like that uh, second day after the rain these did great very warm now this right here is my puppy coat literally you can mash it down to about the size of a softball um, I got this you could spend two or three hundred dollars for a puppy coat but I got this one for like 40 something bucks on Amazon and it is trail tested and approved by me and uh, shout out to my buddy Lucas who uh, uh, he went out and hiked AT last year, and he used one of these kind of jackets, and uh, it survived his whole trip. So, uh, uh, Lucas tried and tested, approved. It's all good. Uh, also, uh, rain pants. I only really use these one day, but these are just some REI rain pants. They, uh, they held up great. Did a fantastic job while I was out there. Uh, pack cover uh, seal nylon pack cover I only used it one day out there but I've used this thing many times to the point that I've got some duct tape covering a hole in it that's just, that just goes over your pack and just keeps everything dry while you're walking in damp condition going to the bathroom get your trowel you dig a cat hole with it titanium pot. This is my whole cook set right in here. Got some cook pot, got a lid. I keep a uh, little cloth in here, uh, microfiber cloth to clean it up with. That's my fuel canister. My lighter. And this is just a little BRS stove here.
BRS. That's the that's the brand name. Anyway, this just screws on top here, like that. Lots of it's on top of it. That's it. Very simple, very light, very compact. That's what you want for backpack. With my my food, uh, titanium spoon slash fork. Uh, that's the only utensil I carry. People will usually ask, do you carry a gun? Do you carry a knife? All that kind of stuff. Um, this is the only, I guess, knife or whatever I carry. Uh, that's all I've ever needed. And uh, honestly, the only thing that I even needed this right here for on this particular trip was uh, when I got my resupply box to cut the tape to open the box up. So you don't need a gun. You don't need a big knife. You don't need Rambo knives. You don't need all that crap. So uh, it's just extra weight, extra bulk. Uh, you really don't even, you know, what little bit you'll use a knife is surprising. People ask me, do you use freeze-dried food? No, they cost a lot of money. They're like eight bucks for a meal. The Nor pasta side, one dollar at your grocery store. This is good food right there. You boil a cup of water, you pour it over in there, you set this down in the pot, you put the lid on it. You wait a little while, you stir it occasionally, you're ready to eat right out of there. You don't even have to put it in there to have to clean it up later. You just boil water in here. And then when you get done, you just throw that in your garbage bag, you're good. With the, with the Nor meals, or any other meals for that matter, you can leave them in this bag if you want to, but it's going to be a little bit bulkier on the trash. You can put, them in, put your stuff in a Ziploc bag. At that point, if you need any powdered milk or whatever, you can just go ahead and add that in there. And that way, it's taking up very little space. You can get several meals in a tight, compact area, and uh, your trash is minimal. And also, you got the old top ramen. That's always good. That's always a, a hiker favorite. Uh, something I want to add about uh, your meals out on the trail. Uh, Keep them simple. Don't be trying to figure out how to bring a bunch of eggs and this and that, making a whole bunch of big stuff and skillets and needing different pots and pans. Keep it simple. That's the best advice I can give you because when you get up in the morning, you just kind of want to get going, unless you're a coffee drinker and you got to have your coffee. Uh, when you get to camp at night, you really probably don't want to. Uh, uh, do anything elaborate you're probably wore out from the day you just want to cook something eat something go to bed so uh, don't be planning some several course meal with a bunch of different things uh, you're going to regret it and of course you saw my ragged maps that I had while I was out there yeah they uh, they pretty much get trashed uh, this is where I got my maps from this is the 2017 Through Hikers Companion for the Appalachian Trail. Uh, tells everything you need to know about the trail, where you're going, the, the shelters coming up, the campsites, the springs, anything you need to know about the whole trail, uh, the maps, everything is in here. When you get to town, where you go to get whatever you need in town. I had a bag here with my little electronic stuff in it. I have my cable so I could charge stuff, a uh, little plug so I could charge up this. This is uh, uh, my, my battery pack. I just use this to charge up the GoPro and the phone. Or uh, just, I think that was, yeah, that was pretty much all I had. And uh, this would have several charges on it. So uh, that's how you charge your stuff when you're on the trail. Uh, this right here, this is, uh, this is my first aid slash fix it repair kit anything that I needed. Uh, it's got my toothbrush and toothpaste and uh, uh, vitamin I, ibuprofen, uh, any little uh, band-aids or anything like that, uh, toenail clippers, earplugs in case you stay at a shelter when it's uh, kind of loud, people snoring, whatever, uh, that always. But this right here, this has got everything I need in it for first aid or whatever and this is probably kind of big so you don't really need that much 
honestly on the Appalachian Trail or any trail, really all you need is maybe some ibuprofen and a couple band-aids and you're, you're good. I did carry trucking poles, I use them. Uh, besides saving your knees on the downhill, you can also use them to set up your shelter. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about that here in a minute. That's some, uh, a couple of different uh, shelter pitches that I use. But uh, that's not the ones I use, that's my wife's. Uh, mine are in the trunk, she's got the car, so that's where they are. So this one right here, that's your basic A-frame tarp setup. You got coverage on all sides, so you either want where the wind is coming from this way or from this way. Uh, you don't want a wind tunnel going through there, so... Uh, that's a good, that's a great one for uh, when it's going to be raining. Here's one here. This is kind of more of a, when it's nicer out. You just kind of leave it open on one side. It's got a lot of coverage. But, uh, you know, still keep the, uh, uh, any elements off of you. So, uh, that's a good one. On this one right here, you're going to lay it out flat. You're going to stake right down here and you're gonna leave the corners free you're gonna stake these two this right here could even be up against the tree that's how I usually do it anyway so what you do with the, the bottom part is you put it up underneath and this is a good cold weather shelter so this one right here You've got a lot of coverage in here, and uh, you can use poles. Normally, this would be a tree right here, and you just build it right up against the tree, and the sides can even close up around the tree. And uh, the way it works back there is you've got where the uh, corners come in, you've actually got part of your floor right there. And so, if you need to, you just bring this in stake it down bring that in stake it down and uh, you've got your own little cocoon there and this is the one that I use the most and if you need to you can of course open it up here and get some good wind in but with this thing completely closed uh, uh, that's that's a good warm shelter right there So with the walls in and closed up shut, here's what you got. You just put your ground sheet down, you pack and everything in there, you've got plenty of room to lay down. And that's how I slept warm when it got down to 22 degrees.